welcome you all to this course on electron diffraction and imaging. In the last class, we mentioned about the basic structure of the electron microscope, okay, how to get and bright field, dark field and diffraction pattern, okay. Today, what we will talk about is those patterns, how we can use to correlate microstructure eh, with diffraction pattern. Okay, the greatest advantage of a micro electron microscope is that we can get diffraction as well as image from the same region of the sample which we can obtain. Okay. That information can be used to correlate microstructure to the phase information, how the different phases are oriented in the matrix. How to go about, I will explain a, in a very brief way, but this takes a lot of time and one will have to gain a lot of experience. Okay. So, what are the information which we can obtain or what are the applications? One, we can get information about the crystal structure, okay. that is one information which we can get it from a microscope by analyzing the diffraction patterns which are taken in different orientations. Then another great advantage is that in a transmission electron microscope, since electron beam we are using it, we can focus it to a, the beam to a very small area and then get information from even in a polycrystalline material from a one single grain that is a single crystal information we can obtain. The next is if there are different phases are there which has formed during solid state transformation we wanted to find out how these phases are oriented in the matrix that information can be obtained. That is what we call this orientation relationship between different phases. As such using the crystal structure information we can identify okay, using diffraction pattern. Suppose different phases are there. In the diffraction pattern taken from a region like suppose a sample we this is that sample and this is the area the beam is falling. Suppose in this area uh, two types of, I am just showing it with two different morphologies, but this could be two different phases which are present in that region. Okay. Then we can identify what are the phases which are there because the diffraction pattern from that area contains diffraction from the matrix, okay. diffraction from this particular phase, diffraction from this phase. Okay. If we analyze this diffraction pattern, then we get all the information about the phases and how these uh, patterns are oriented with respect to other. Okay, that gives information about the orientation relationship. Okay. Then suppose in many cases, not only it need not be a different phase. Some cases, especially when non-cubic phases form, okay, like a tetragonal phase forms in a FCC matrix, then it can form with its C axis along any one of the A axis or a B axis or C axis of the cubic matrix. That means the same phase but in three orientations, okay, that will that can also be identified using uh, diffraction pattern and co combined use of diffraction and imaging. Okay. In addition to it, in the image side, what all information which we can get? What is the size of the particles? second phase particles which form, their morphology, how they are distributed, whether it is uniform okay. and another is that uh, whether what are the sites at which the second phase particles have nucleated, whether they are formed at the grain boundary preferentially or whether they are formed at some sub boundaries or whether they have uniformly distributed all these sort of information which we can get. Okay. In addition to it, if defects are present in the material, we can get information about the various types of defects which are present in the sample. All these aspects about the uh, uh, finding out the size distribution, then identification of the crystal, especially the identification of the crystal defects that will be dealt with separately okay, in detail in an another class. Okay. In today's class, we are only going to talk about okay, getting a selected area diffraction 
and how the simple bright field and dark field technique which we have mentioned in the last class that itself can give a lot of information about the second phase particles. Most of the work essentially bulk of the microscopy work is done using these three uh, methods of imaging. Okay. What is the first in step which is we have to follow is one obtain symmetric diffraction pattern from the sample. Okay. That is the first step in doing an analysis that is once we have a sample in the microstructure the beam is there the sample can be tilted. Okay, if a sample is there like this the sample can be tilted in different orientations okay, whichever orientation we want it and then get a symmetric pattern. Once we have got a symmetric pattern okay, we should be able to analyze this pattern that is an another part of it which comes. What I will talk about today is only with respect to single crystal patterns I will not go into anything else other than that. Okay. The experimental step is that first you obtain a diffraction pattern. Once you have got a symmetric diffraction pattern the next step which has to be followed is that if you contain if the diffraction pattern contains different uh, spots use all the spots okay, to get images of the sample using the undiffracted spot which is the transmitted spot which we call it as a bright field image and using all other reflections okay, which are there also try to get the dark field images. Quite often what happens is that you may take some few patterns afterwards you realize that I should have imaged it with uh, the particular diffraction spot which is important. Okay. Because if you have a lot of experience then when you look at a sample in the microscope you understand what is necessary. When you do not know when you are a beginner it is better to take that information so you do not lose anything. You can do an analysis later maybe you may have got taken more patterns what is necessary that is what you think that never happens. From my experience I can tell you that take as much pattern as possible and that helps really in the analysis okay, in confirming a lot of uh, uh, hypothesis with which you start. Okay. The next step is that you analyze the diffraction pattern to identify the spots because from a single phase we get a pattern it is essentially a two dimensional uh, periodic patterns which we get it as a, a reciprocal lattice section which we are getting it. It is easy to analyze it and find out which crystal structure but when we have patterns from other phases first thing which we have to then the pattern looks like a random distribution of lot of spots. First thing which you have to identify is that what all the types of periodicity uh, periodic type of two dimensional lattices which are present there once we identify that is the first step in analysis of the diffraction pattern. Then once that has been done now it has to be correlated to each type of pattern from which phase which it has come that is the next step. And there are many softwares are available with which we can do this analysis. Okay. But I am not going to talk about the software because uh, first one should learn how to do it. So that whether the software does it because software like a black box whether it gives the correct information or not one should be able to cross check. Okay. So I mentioned about the first step is to get a symmetric diffraction pattern. Okay. This symmetric diffraction pattern we can get it in a microscope by tilting that sample observing it on that screen and so that we get spots which are of uniform intensity. Okay. How to get this pattern using Kikuchi pattern all these things are being covered in a different class. You assume that we have for this lecture we assume that we have got a symmetric diffraction pattern. Okay. Now once this pattern has been obtained okay, you can tilt the beam a little bit so that only two spots okay, are essentially strong. Okay, this is called as a two beam condition. So, if you make two beam uh, two spots only strong that is that is the central spot as well as one of the diffracted spot using these central spots now you try to image take a bright field and using this uh, diffracted spots you take the dark field image both images are necessary. Okay. Then you take with respect to maybe instead of taking that you take with respect to these two 
then also take a bright field underdog. You will think that what is it going to make because when you tilt a sample little bit, the contrast can change drastically. As we have discussed in the earlier class, okay, the diffraction contrast strongly depends upon okay, uh, the uh, orientation of the sample with respect to a beam. Not only that, even if it is a slight tilt is taking place, the contrast can change drastically because we know that that exact black condition maximum peak intensity if we tilt a little bit the intensity drops that will be reflected in the image also okay. So, like this you can go to different uh, two beam conditions and take images okay. So, what I am showing it here is just an example okay of a diffraction pattern which has been taken okay. Why I am showing this picture is essentially to know that in this you forget about these pictures you just concentrate on this diffraction pattern. This diffraction pattern contains lot of spots okay. Some spots are very strong, some spots are weak. What I have done it is gone to two beam condition, put an aperture around the central spot and imaged it that is where I get this bright field picture. Then what I have done is I have taken with respect to this reflection put an aperture around it and imaged it in the dark field. I get some uh, uh, ellipsoidal shape second phase particles could be seen. Then I put an aperture around this one and try to image it that is what this 0 1 0. Yeah this is uh, first it is taken with this one 1 0 0 this what it has come. Then with respect to 0 1 0 I image it this reflection has come okay. Then I put around this particular one okay or you can say that equivalent to this one. Then uh, I get one of these images then with respect to an another one like this I get this image then I put this around this central one I get this image okay this sort of images which I had got. But now if I look at this one information becomes very obvious from this if I take it with respect to this 1 0 0 as well as with respect to 1 half 1 0 half 1 0 essentially comes like this half okay uh, 1 0 this is half 1 0 this reflection this reflection and this reflection if I take it it is essentially the same particles which are there. So, both of them belong to those two spots are there they are coming from different spots from the same diffraction pattern from the same phase that is what you can identify. That is why I mentioned that you using all the spots take images otherwise you never get the actual information which you are looking for. Wealth of information is covered but you should not be stingy in taking micrographs liberally okay. And similarly with this central one if I take it I can see it here with respect to this part uh, where that is uh, 0 1 0 as well as this one 1 0 0 as well as the 1 half 0 if I take it you can see that here again it is the same type. So, this is that information which comes out of it you understand that that is why I mentioned that you have to take spot diffraction from whatever the spots which you can see closest to this. Similarly, you can take with respect to this fundamental reflection because when we look at it obviously this periodicity is very clear. So, we can take with respect to the, this reflection, this reflection and this reflection if I take it all other reflections are essentially a, 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 a comes from the periodicity of the lattice. So, essentially we have covered most of the reflection. So, this way we will have complete information about the various phase and the structures which we have got. I will come back to this again but this has more information at this stage I do not want to talk about it okay. This is an another example because that is a much more complicated one. Why I took that picture is to tell that from two different spots if you image quite often you find that the same precipitate gets. Made. So, you do not know whether is the particular super lattice reflection which you see is belonging to the matrix at the one particular phase or an another phase that also with an example I will come. Here it is a gamma prime precipitation in nickel based super alloy. If you look at this diffraction pattern you have a strong spots plus some weak spots are also there 
Okay. Then this is a bright field picture which is taken with respect to putting an aperture around it. When I put an aperture around this reflection and try to image it, I get a dark field picture. Okay. In this one, I am not showing all the pictures, okay. you believe me. When I put an aperture around on this reflection or around this reflection, I find that the same precipitates is getting imaged. That means that all these parts are coming from the same uh, uh, second phase. Now the next question comes is that okay, this is logically we argued out. Now how to identify, uh, how to index this diffraction pattern, okay. That is what we will talk about it. Okay, you see this pattern. This pattern you can see these parts. First thing which I can see it is that with respect to a bright spots, I can see a periodic lattice is there. Okay. When I had talked about how to index a diffraction pattern, I had mentioned that uh, by measuring this because most of the time uh, in electron microscopy, we come with an information about the type of phases which are present. And we use microscope to find out how these phases are distributed because X-ray diffraction does not give any information about it. X-ray diffraction tells these are all the phases which are present. So, we have some idea about it. But we wanted to find out that how these phases are distributed, can we identify that from an electron, uh, from electron microscope. Okay. So, now if you look here, this pattern we can identify them. Okay. This is a periodic pattern okay. and that is what I had shown with respect to putting a grid around it. Okay. This grid what essentially it tells, okay. uh, it is a two dimensional grid by measuring this distance, measuring this distance and measuring this distance. Okay. Using this formula which I had mentioned earlier, lambda into L equals d star into d where d is the spacing in real lattice and d is the spacing which we are seeing for the different g vectors. Okay. That is equal to lambda is the wavelength of the radiation, l is the camera length which we call it as a camera constant. Using this formula, we can find out, uh, since we know the crystal structure, we can find out what the uh, uh, spots correspond to each of the spot. Then I also I mentioned that using stereographic projection, you can index them okay, without any ambiguity. Okay. All the spots could be indexed correctly. Once such an indexing uh, has been done, for this we have to use this sort of a, uh, uh, trying to identify first how the periodicity is there in the lattice. That is the first step. That is, this is one which is periodic. Then there are other spots are there. Okay. What is the periodicity which is associated with that? So for that, if I look for, I can make out that this one, this one, this one, this forms a smaller grid. This is what essentially. Okay. Now you can make out that these parts are all from another periodic lattice. So essentially we have two types of two dimensional periodic lattices are there. So it could mean that one, this pattern could be a super lattice reflection corresponding to the same phase or because the two choices now arises. The second is that it could be a entirely a different phase also. Okay. In this particular case, it is essentially gamma prime precipitates since it has been analyzed, I can tell it. But otherwise, this is with the choice you have to go. These are all the two possibilities. Now we have to find out which is what it is. This is where imaging helps, simultaneous taking of the image is important because by putting aperture around it, we are able to identify what is the uh, type of whether it is a second phase particle is present or not, all this information. Suppose it is ordered single crystal, second phase uh, one will the same area will get image, correct. So that we can get information by not only, just not by taking diffraction pattern, by taking dark field images. But by just taking images, you cannot get any information, you have to take diffraction pattern correspondingly. Diffraction pattern forms the basis of taking images, not the other way around. Okay. Is it clear? Okay. So now we can identify two phases and in this as I showed in the 
previous slide like here. So, we can find out the distribution of the phase uh, one particular uh, uh, precipitate is also there. This uh, the crystal structure we have some information from uh, XRD and all with which we can analyze it and tell that this. So, we know how the how where they are distributed they are distributed uniformly in the matrix all this information which we have ok. okay. This is uh, another pattern from that same sample this you can do as an exercise and try to index it and find out ok. This is one of the simplest one where only a single phase is there ok. Now, we will come back again to the diffraction pattern which I had shown it is a little bit more complex ok. Uh, how we had gone about to analyze it when you look uh, from a visual observation you can make out that these bright spots all form a periodic lattice. One should always remember that how many two dimensional periodic lattices which we can get it it is nothing but 5 either it is a square is it a rectangle or uh, rhombus ok parallelogram or a hexagon only these 5 types of 2 dimensional lattices we can have which exhibits them. So, that is exactly because for periodic lattices these so all the diffraction patterns are in a reciprocal lattice uh, unit cell we are taking some cut section. So, they can exhibit only these 5 types ok, but from analyzing this and going back and find out what the crystal structure is a daunting task ok. So, ok uh, this is a square pattern that is the first information because that part I will not go into from this we can say that this has a fourfold symmetry ok. Uh, we can uh, from measuring the lattice parameter we can identify what all these parts which correspond to once these parts have been identified what these correspond to ok. We if we take a cross product of two of these parts that will give you rise to yeah, that will give information about the zone axis ok. Now, the same methodology which we, this is an another one because in this particular case different variants and two phases are present because since it has been analyzed, but it takes uh, years work to do all this it is not uh, as you see in a one class one hour I will be talking about it today and this is an another diffraction pattern where two types of uh, uh, phases are present where the patterns we could see them distinctly here it could not be ok I will come to it ok. The first thing which I can do it is that here again the same pattern I take it I can put make a, this is a periodic fat pattern. So, I am just showing you the grid to identify them if you uh, this is the matrix one here there are some spots which come in between like this this is one type of a pattern which I can identify because this corresponds to gamma prime also which we had seen just now that type of a pattern could be seen. Now, this is that same pattern is there any type other type of a periodicity which is there if I look from here to this one this one this one this particular one and then because that streaking is that same in these ones correct. This forms a parallelogram which repeats itself like this that you can see it now no uh, just uh, come back to it here what I have done it is in this particular pattern ok. I am just taking the central spot this one this central spot here this forms a grid this again because these are all circular spots they form a grid like this ok this is one type of a pattern which is there that is what now you can see it ok. Now, in that same pattern whether any other uh, pattern is there if I look from here to here this one spot which is straight the similar type of a spot which is here this is a forms a parallelogram this parallelogram repeats itself again correct ok. So, this is one type of a grid which forms a two dimensional pattern which is there. So, we have seen one type of a pattern which is a square there is an another type of a pattern which we can see it here ok. 
in this one again if you look from here from here to here this one and this one these four together form an another rectangle okay this also is repeating okay. now i put this so that means that this diffraction pattern contains essentially looks like three uh, three plus four types of uh, period uh, reciprocal lattice sections which are superimposed on one another that is when the diffraction pattern has been taken that is the first information which we require. So, now if we have all the diffraction parts how they are periodically arranged that information which we have got it correct. Otherwise if you look at the pattern like this apart from these central spots you do not see any periodicity the first information is to get that okay. Once this information has been obtained if you have taken a dark field using these reflections that helps in identifying whether these parts corresponding to one particular uh, second phase particle or it could so happen that the other choice is that two second phase particles by chance depending upon their orientation those spots are coming at the spots are coming at the same position. So, this can also be identified okay that we can do it only if we take a corresponding image okay that is what essentially is being shown in alloying conal 708. In this if you see it I think here that indexing uh, yeah it is correct. You, you look at this uh, 010, 010 is essentially this reflection with which when I image it this is how this precipitates have aligned okay. With respect to 100 when I try to image it no, 0 1 0 then if I image with 1 half 0, 1 half 0 is uh, this is there uh, this is 1 half 0 these two streaking is in the same direction. So, maybe they are coming from the same precipitate when I put an aperture around it and try to image it and when I put an aperture around this and try to image it. Okay. The difference which essentially what happens is that here if you look carefully in addition to these spots which are streaked there are many fine circular particles are there. That means that two morphologies which we can see of a precipitate. Then the question is that uh, if it is a particular orientation of a precipitate you cannot have a different morphology it has to be because in a single grain we are looking at it it, has, it should have the same morphology. In this case only option which we have is that this diffraction spot 0 1 0 is coming from two precipitates or diffraction spots of two of them are coinciding. you understand this is that complexity which can come in a microscopy analysis okay. That same thing happens here with 1 0 0. So, try to image with as many reflections as possible now we are able to differentiate and tell that these spots this one this one and this one and uh, these three reflections that is 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 1 1 0 they match with both this phase one is called gamma prime and this is called gamma double prime. But if I take with 1 half 0 those reflections come only corresponding to the precipitate particles. And now if you see it this is where you can see this, these spots correspond to one variant, this corresponds to another variant, and this one corresponds to the third variant plus this one if you take it these central spots correspond to both the variants. Okay. All this information now we can correlate because first using this method we are able to identify how many types of periodic two dimensional patterns are there okay. and then we have imaged all the reflections and with which we are able to get this information okay. This is in an another alloy system where that is uh, this is an another commercial nickel based super alloy in kernel 625 where you, you get 
the same type of a precipitate gamma double prime is there we do not know whether gamma prime is there or not so how do we identify because analysis of this pattern tells that gamma prime and gamma double prime the super lattice reflections of gamma prime coincide with that of gamma double prime but gamma double prime has got extra reflections so again we did a similar analysis but when we look from 100 as well as 150 we find that only the ellipsoidal precipitates are getting imaged this gives an indication that this alloy contains only gamma double prime and not gamma prime this is how one can get information this i have taken it because it is some personal choice from my work experience i have taken that i thought that this explains okay how to go about and analyze complex diffraction pattern and get useful information about the microstructure by analyzing this diffraction pattern okay and in this particular picture if you see it you can now here see that with uh, 100 type the circular particles two morphologies could be seen which i had explained earlier this again if you see it in this particular one the similar type of a gamma double prime is there in addition to it i have one which part corresponding to here another four spots are coming if i look the periodicity if i see this one i draw it around like this i can join it like this this i can just go on this is an another one and then with respect to this one okay and then with respect to this one with respect to this one i can join them essentially for the new phase which is there two types of uh, possibly because the pattern looks similar but they are oriented in a different way that means that since the pattern is similar we can tell that it's a different variant of the same phase which is there in the matrix that is what with the dark field image we have identified here i had not shown all the uh, there are 12 variants are there which has been done but here i am just showing only one particular one you understand that okay this is the way one has to go about to uh, uh, and do analysis to get information about the various phases which are present in the sample okay what are the limitations in doing a microscopy analysis okay if you are looking for statistical distribution of different phases and all then and volume which we are analyzing it is extremely small so it gives a poor statistics but for that scm is better to get information but scm is not able to differentiate various phases and get that information that can be obtained from here the strength of a microscopy is that you can identify how different phases are present and how they are distributed okay what position how where they have nucleated these are all the information which it can give okay in a conventional transmission electron microscope what we have considered is only just a bright field dark field and selected area diffraction pattern okay okay now we'll go to the paraxial ray method to graphically construct image formation in lens because in the last class i mentioned that the ray diagram can be drawn to find out first thing which one should know is that what is paraxial approximation okay yeah lens is an object where when the parallel ray comes essentially at this particular point refraction takes place correct then again here i can draw a surface normal again a refraction will take place from here into this one and finally refraction to the surfaces are take place so if you wanted to strictly uh, find out the draw the ray diagram graphically we have to use the snell's law the snell's law essentially says mu equals sin i by sin r where i is the incident angle r is the refracted angle correct you assume the case of the ray which is passing through the center here the angle which the ray submits incident and this one is both are zero and if i consider a ray which is very close here then also i and r becomes very small in such a case we know that sin i and sin r can be approximated to i and r okay so mu becomes 
i by r we can take it okay this is what is done in geometrical optics to draw all the ray diagrams which we have studied what information which this can give is that this will at least tell you if we keep an object at a particular place if we know what is the focal length of the lens what is the position at which we will be getting the image though the image at the center may be all right but away from it it will blur that is what it happens if we use a magnifying glass to look at it only at the central region is bright other regions blurring comes okay which you might have noticed already okay so this is the formula which we use it if we use this formula okay when we know the lens that is 1 by u plus 1 by v equals 1 by f okay where u is the distance from the lens to object and v is the distance from uh, object uh, lens to the uh, image okay v and here u will come in this case and f is the focal length of the lens so using using this formula if we keep an object at a particular distance you can find out where exactly the image has to come okay that's very clear in an electron microscope okay we get two types of information diffraction information and image information and both of them are occurring at different places okay or for that matter for a lens when we consider when we say the focal length is f inherently there is one plane which is at a distance f is going to be there on either side this is which i have taken a convex lens which is of relevance to an electron microscope okay in this particular one at this distance and this plane is defined as a, a back focal plane okay in the back focal plane what happens all the rays which are emitted from the sample in in a particular direction they are all brought to a focus that is if i i'll draw it again okay object the ray which is parallel to the optical like here another ray i can consider it these two rays will be focused at this particular point these two rays are focused at this point so this is the back focal plane so in the back focal plane we get both the uh, get the diffraction image information and then in the image plane we get the image information which we get it correct so how to draw the ray diagram that with this way we can run the ray diagram and what is image plane image plane is one in which all the rays which are emitted from the sample in different directions okay they will all be brought to a focus at a particular that is this ray so all of them will be coming this is what how we define as an image plane okay so this is how we can draw the ray because first we know the object at what position it is kept okay and with respect to the lens then we can find out where the image plane is going to be there now using this paraxial approximation okay using this condition that rays parallel to optic axis they are all focused back focal plane and what is uh, this uh, parallel ray diagram parallel ray diagram is essentially to find out this information you take a lens okay we know that uh, a ray which is parallel to the optic axis passes through the back focal plane correct and the ray which passes through the center of the lens okay from the particular point that goes undeviated correct and the third is this is an another focal plane the ray which passes through this particular plane when it comes and meets the lens 
this will become parallel. So, 3 rays which are emanating from that sample become parallel. If you are not drawn it correctly, this has to be a parallel one, all of them will be meeting it at that point is the image plane. So, so image plane can be found out using the formula or graphically this way also we can do it. So, essentially what is done here is that when we do that, this is the back focal plane. This is where you see that the rays, the green rays are the rays which are emanated from the sample at different points, but in the same direction that green as well as the red, they are focused at this point. And the rays which are emanating the green and red are coming from the same point and they are all focused to a point. This is what the image plane is, this we can calculate it. Suppose there is an another lens which is kept there. Okay. If this lens has a focal length such that this is where exactly it is, okay. then we know what is u2, we know what is f, okay, the focal length if you know of this lens, then we can identify where exactly is that image will come. Okay. Then how to draw this is that again use the same parallel ray graphical method with which I have taken one. I can immediately now able to identify where the image has to come and then these rays which are joining here and diverging and meeting the lens, I can draw them. This is how the ray diagram can be drawn. This is for an image. Okay. Here I have taken a focal length f1 equals 2.5, another is f2 2 centimeter. This is u1 and these distances I had given okay, with which it has been done. Suppose I wanted the diffraction pattern to come on this screen, what should I do? I mentioned in the class that all these lenses which convex lenses by changing the lens current we can change the focal length because these lenses are kept at the same position. This is exactly what is being shown here. Now you see this, the lens is here, the focal length has become 4.34, there it was 2. With this when I have done it and now use the parallax method because this is the object now for this lens. So, a ray which is coming from here, this is the way it will come and join and the ray because and the ray which is coming from here that will come and join here. Okay. So, now we have drawn where exactly these rays have to form that image and now you see that all the red ones which are coming from the, they get focused here, other one will get focused here. By changing the focal length, now this has been used as them because these dashed lines are the ones which is essentially the parallel ray method which I am using to identify the image plane. Because here what I have done is that between the object like in a microscope, object is kept at a particular position in the sample and the image is taken on the screen. So, that distance is fixed. Now, by this lens focal length remains that same like in an objective lens, only this length, uh, focal length of this lens is being changed. Okay. This is exactly what is done in a microscope to get a diffraction pattern. Now, we can see that using this method, you can draw okay, the ray diagrams. I expect all of you to learn this because in an electron microscope, basically when you wanted to understand at different places we form images, okay, one should be able to draw ray diagrams to identify what all the positions in the optical column where different type of images form. Okay. This is just like a tutorial I had shown, but essentially if you draw it yourself taking different focal lengths, then only you will understand it. I may give it as an exercise for you to solve, but I expect you to work it out yourself. Okay. This I consider it is that one should understand. Normally what most of the students do is that they have in memory how these diagrams are there. But if you tell that this is the particular length as a focal length, draw the ray diagram, nobody knows how to draw it. Okay. One should not be in such a position. That is why I took this up as a sort of a tutorial to just inform you how one should go about okay, and uh, draw ray diagram for uh, diffraction as well as image to come on that screen. Okay. We will stop here now. Thank you.